In this video, we're going to be demonstrating an instrument approach into Tampa, Florida using an ILS 19 right approach. I'll show you how to set that up, but uh, I will also provide a configuration file that you can download and just load to, to set it up automatically. So let's go into the world map here, first thing. And for destination, we've got Tampa, and we're going to slip up an instrument approach. So we want low altitude airways, and I want to set up a, a ILS 19 right. And to make the uh, approach, what I usually do is set up a custom point. Double click on here, like this, and Go set as departure. So now you've got a departure point north of Tampa going into landing at Tampa, doing an ILS 19 right approach, and uh, it's set for an IFR. Now, the other thing we want to set up here is flight conditions. Uh, I go in here and I'm setting up uh, preset conditions. I want to set it up for a stormy weather. So the weather is going to be challenging. So I've got it set up for a storm. And you can also set it up for the time of day. I don't, that doesn't really matter too much. I just want it to be sometime during the day. Let's close this. Now I've already got these loaded in a, in a configuration file. So I'm just going to load my configuration file here. And it's custom. IFR Tampa, which is right here. All right, there's my the same uh, flight plan I already showed you. It's going from a custom departure point to Tampa using an approach to ILS runway 19 right. So now we're ready to fly. That will load. Okay, and we're flying the Daher TVM 930, which is shown here. And uh, we'll just click ready to fly. Okay, we're ready to fly. I'm going to move this ATC panel out of the way, first thing. We'll start our approach. Uh, Turning and descending towards Mera. One of the things you'll learn here is that uh, you don't get vectors voluntarily. You have to request them. So I am going to request a vector to Mera. Normally in an IFR flight, uh, you might normally get vectors voluntarily without requesting them. But in Microsoft Flight Simulator, you do have to request them. And you have to request them periodically because uh, as you're heading, uh, your vector changes. Approach control won't necessarily let you know that unless you request it. So you have to kind of keep requesting it occasionally to get uh, the latest vector. So we're on a heading of about uh, 190 now for Mira, and we're descending down to 3000. And we're getting bounced around a little bit by turbulence in this uh, thunderstorm, but it's not too bad. Okay, let's hold a heading of 190 and start leveling out at 3000 feet. Come in with a little bit of power to hold the altitude at 3,000 feet and hold the heading on 190 for now. It's looking good. Looking good. Looking good. Level at 3,000. Hold that as best you can. It's looking good. OK, 
Okay, let's go ahead and request another vector to Captain Nera. Approach to Alpha Alpha Sierra X ray Golf Sierra Alpha requesting vector to next waypoint. Alpha Golf Sierra Alpha, continue to And we got a heading at 155, so let's turn to 155 and maintain our, our altitude at 3000 for now until we get to Nera. Hold this heading of 155 for a little while. And let's go ahead and switch the nav to localizer 1. So we'll start to pick up the localizer. That's looking good. The localizer is coming in a little bit. And we'll just keep holding this heading for now. And holding it at 3,000 till we get to Mira. You can see Mira coming up in the GPS on the right side of the screen here. Everything's looking good. We've got to get our altitude back up. Let's get back up to 3,000 feet. And keep the heading about 155. Get the altitude back up to 3,000. We've got to maintain 3,000 till Mira. The localizer is starting to come in. Now you see we're starting to cross the localizer path. So we can start uh, descending below 3,000 now, crossing Mira. And we'll just fly a heading to fo follow the localizer right now. To Let's turn to a heading of about 220, 230 to pick up the localizer. Bring the localizer back in. And you can see the glide slope starting to come in on the altitude display. The glide slope is a little diamond triangle under the green diamond triangle under the G on the uh, scale to the left side of the uh, altitude display. Tower, Alpha, Let's come a little Sierra further Alpha, right miles, to pull in the localizer. Runway, the glide slope approach. is coming down. You can see the glide slope, the little green diamond is almost Alpha, centered Alpha, on Alpha, the uh, altitude Alpha, display, Alpha, which is Alpha, where we want it to be. And we'll start a turn to pick up the localizer. Clear ILS runway, one niner right approach, Goddard Golf Sierra Alpha. Okay, the glide slope, we're getting above the glide slope, we have to increase our rate of descent a little bit to get back on the glide slope, and the localizer is coming in a little bit, we just need to hold this heading a little bit longer to pull in the localizer. The glide slope is looking pretty good, we're slightly above the glide slope, which is fine. We're bringing in the localizer, but it still hasn't completely come in yet. Glide slope's looking good, and now the localizer is coming in, so we can start a turn onto the localizer course. And that's looking good. We have a little bit of a crosswind from the right, so we're going to have to hold, hold some crosswind correction to hold the localizer course. We're going to have to hold about 200 to 210 degrees to, to keep the localizer. We're getting above the glide slope now, so we need to increase our rate of descent to get back on the glide slope. There you go. Uh, we need to correct a little bit more to the left to bring the localizer back in. The glide slope is coming back up, just about on the center where it should be. We're holding a little bit of a left correction to bring the localizer back in. The glide slope's looking good. Getting slightly below the glide slope, so let's decrease the rate of descent to get back on the glide slope. Hold that heading. The localizer is coming back in. As the localizer comes back in, let's turn onto the localizer course. 
and hold a heading of about 200 degrees to hold, hold the localizer in. We're getting below the glide slope, so we need to increase the power a little bit to slow our rate of descent. Okay, we've got a heading of about 200 degrees. That's holding the localizer nicely. Keep decreasing the rate of descent to bring the glide slope in. That heading is holding the localizer pretty well, and the glide slope is coming down. Keep it going, keep it going. Glide slope is coming down nicely, um, and the localizer looking good. Everything's looking good. We're on the localizer and on the glide slope. We're getting close to minimums. Minimums for this approach are a little less than 300 feet. So we've got a little bit of a ways to go before we get down to minimums. So we'll just keep it descending on the glide slope and on the localizer until we start to break out and see the runway. Turn slightly right to pick up the localizer. Glide slope's looking pretty good. Keep it on the glide slope. There you go. Turn back to the left to get back on the localizer. There you go, right there. Keep descending on the glide slope. We should be breaking out pretty soon to see the runway. Hold that heading to hold the localizer. Keep it descending. The glide slope is below us. It's coming up now. We're just about at minimums, and there is the runway right in front of us. We can see the rabbit. So let's get it lined up with the runway for landing and decrease the power a little bit for landing and start getting it lined up with the runway. Just like that. Looking good. Hold it off the runway now. Hold it off. Hold it off and decrease the power and let it settle down nicely onto the runway. There you go. Nice approach. 